Hi, this is Jesse Liberty for Telerik. Today we're going to take a look at the RAD docking control. RAD docking is part of the Telerik RAD controls for Silverlight and WPF suite for XAML and .NET development. We'll begin our examination of the RAD docking control by creating an instance of RAD docking. Then we will add a document host and RAD splitter container. We'll take a look at how RAD panes fit within the RAD pane group. Let's take a look at all of this by examining it in code. We begin by opening Visual Studio. Let's create a new project and call it Rad Docking. Getting Started. Accept the project and accept Silverlight 5. When the Telerik configuration wizard comes up, we'll go down to Docking and say Finish. And as soon as Visual Studio settles down, you can see that by adding docking, we have also added Telerik Windows Controls Navigation and Telerik Windows Controls. Let's make a little bit more room and come down to our XAML, where we will add an instance of the Telerik RAD docking control. Within the RAD docking control, we're going to add an instance of rad docking dot document host. The document host is meant to be the default container for the editable documents in your application. Within the document host, we'll add a rad split container. The RAD split container allows you to use movable bars to divide the displayed area into resizable parts. Within the RAD split container, we're going to add RAD pane groups. And within the RAD pane group, we can add one or more RAD pane objects. Each RAD pane object will appear as a tab. You can see those tabs in the design view. Let's set the header for the first tab to be description. We'll set the header for the second tab to be cannot drag. In order to enforce the fact that this second tab cannot be dragged, we're going to set can float to false. And as long as can float is left as false, you will not be able to drag that pane. Of course, that can be changed programmatically, but let's run the application and see how these two panes work together. Description, we can pull directly off of its current setting, and we can have it dock on the right side or on the bottom or on the left cannot drag no matter how we try will not be draggable until we change that setting on can float. Let's give these panes some content. In the first pane we can place a text block. We'll set text wrapping to wrap and we'll set the text that we want to appear within the pane. Let's do the same thing for the second pane we're going to give it content and in this case we'll once again use a text block set text wrapping to wrap and then the text property will be set to the text that we wish to have appear within this pane notice that the design surface immediately reflects the content as well let's run the application and you can see that the content of each pane is visible. And if I right click on the tab, I see the options that I can use for changing whether or not it's docked or floating. And those are uh, faded out and disabled in the cannot drop tab. The contents are visible as well. You can also pin panes to an initial position we're going to go outside of the document host and add another pane within a RAD split container. And we'll have that initial position docked 
left, which you can see immediately reflected in the design surface. We'll add another pane that will be docked right. Finally, we'll add another tab that will be docked bottom. We can scroll down and see that in the design surface as well. Let's run the application. And you can see that the initial position has worked on all of these panes, whichever docking position we gave them, but at runtime we can move them to new positions. Each pane group has more than one pane, and so you can flip back and forth between the two. I hope you've seen how easy it is to work with the dock control. For Telerik, this is Jesse Liberty. I look forward to talking with you again soon and hope that you will stay tuned for the other videos in this series on the RAD dock control.